If you read the Boulder Daily Camera this morning, you probably read about yet another presidential debate coming to campus. Campus recruiters tell us that the fastest way from nerves to confidence at any career fair is by practicing your personal introduction in front of a mirror. Happy Thursday, Buff fans. I'm Jordan Siemens here to bring you this week's happenings in Colorado sports. You've always been able to use your Buff One card to pay at Alfred Packer Girl, but now it's more than just campus cash. The ITLL is a space for all types of learners, from those who use traditional lab space to interactive exhibits like this square wheel. What do you think of the early voting system in Colorado as far as students go? Well, I like it. Beautiful sunny days in February aren't necessarily enough to prove climate change. Scientists are looking for global weather patterns that happen over longer periods of time. The power outage that affected Boulder this week shut down traffic signals and businesses. The brand new Veterans Memorial Lounge has a lot of beautiful features, but the most important one are these names right here. It's been designated as a free speech area and is the site of multiple protests scheduled on Facebook for later tonight. At the end of last season, Colorado women's basketball had lost 14 games in a row. That streak was broken last night. What we can take from both incidents in comparison is that campus alert systems do prove effective in emergency campus situations. When the fans go home, Chip stays right here. His home got a lot bigger last year with the addition of the Champion Center next to Folsom Field, this Buffalo Legacy Walk, and a new athletic training facility on what used to be called Franklin Field. Weekends at Connor O'Neill's were lively, full of music and fun in Boulder's only authentic Irish setting. Sunday's jam session was the last Boulder patrons would see, marking the end of an era for this Pearl Street staple. Construction next door to the pub increased rent and decreased sales for almost two years. I'm super bummed that Connors is closed. It was one of my favorite places to go in Boulder, and I'm, you know, I'm sad that they're closed, but I guess we'll see what's gonna come up in its footsteps. WW Reynolds, which owns the pub's building, constructed a three-story office building next door. The project caused O'Neill's to close its patio and back room, about half the pub's space, for two summers. Sales didn't bounce back enough to stay afloat. After 17 years, um, it, it was just, it just became extremely difficult to make any kind of money and when you factored in rent it was just impossible. You know, and, and that's uh, like, an, an, as I said to you, like that's what you kind of sign up for when you decide to work for yourself. Rent for the space increased by $4,500 per month due to an increase in rent and property taxes combined. The staff says the brunt of business came from the weekend college crowd before construction started. During that project, those students that used to frequent the pub graduated and new students are finding it really hard to find due to these office buildings that now exist next door and the pub's location off of the walking mall. There's no word on what might fill the void left behind by a staple like Connor O'Neill's, but the cost of running a business is also having to deal with its loss. Jordan Siemens, News Team Boulder. Student housing in Boulder typically looks like this older single-family homes, and dated apartment buildings on the hill. It's also priced like this, almost $1,000 per bedroom. Students used to prefer the hill, opting for its traditional stature as the social center of student living, until now. There's definitely been a migration of students that have traditionally wanted to go to the hill that are now going over to East Campus. Um, and I think some of the property managers on the hill are having a little bit harder time. They can still fill their properties, but maybe it's taking a little bit longer now to fill. Students are now flocking to the East Campus neighborhood because it offers something that the Hill just can't. Student living that borders on luxury for a similar price. Nick Maroney lives and works at U Club, a brand new complex on East Campus. Me and a couple of buddies had a plan for a house on the Hill, and that didn't fall through mostly because, you know, leases get snatched up really quickly. Uh, and uh, the pricing was, you know, a little more than we were wanting for what we were getting offered. Additionally, our pricing is a lot more competitive uh, for the room space we're being offered. We're completely furnished. We offer all utilities except for electricity, and I think that speaks to itself. U-Club is owned and managed by American Campus Communities. Though rooms are pricey, the U-Club and complexes like it advertise a more academically focused, secure environment that students and their parents are buying into. 
think that parents, they, they really appreciate the ability for the transition to not be as rough on the student coming from like a situation like the residence halls, which are primarily furnished and kind of have all those amenities to a situation that's a little more independent, but it's not such a big transition. But even with everything you need at your fingertips, the question remains, is it worth being further from main campus and giving up that traditional Hill experience? Students who opt for smaller rooms like this one in Goss Grove make their choice for two reasons. One is to be closer to the social scene of downtown Boulder and to be closer to main campus buildings. For them, the resources available on campus are enough to forego the amenities that East Campus offers. So even a small 8x10 space like this with little room beyond your bed to move is worth it for the location. Sierra Barnes chose a mix of both scenarios. For her, the upgrades don't completely upstage the traditional off-campus experience. Uh, well, I had a private landlord in my previous house, and uh, he was significantly better than the management company that we're going through now, just in terms of little fees, promptness to for maintenance repairs, uh, and just a little bit more understanding. The university's off-campus student services office has an answer to student concerns about landlords and rental companies. We have an attorney, um, Bruce Arbaugh. Basically, they can come in for a consultation. He can also help if the student's having difficulty. They've tried to communicate with their landlord and there's just kind of a breakdown, or the student feels like they've been treated unfairly. So choosing where to live off campus isn't really about finding the cheapest price anymore. It's about what students can get out of their monthly payments. Jordan Siemens, News Team Boulder.